But again, the implication is God's, God is so much greater. God hears and sees, but what he's looking for something different than we're looking for. We're looking for that push-button answer. God is looking for changes in our hearts, a wholehearted seeking. I'll tell you, there's a lot of people that would serve God if all they had to do was, was say the right words and push the right button spiritually. There's a lot of Christianity that is put out there, supposed Christianity that's put out there, and that's the implication. If you just have enough faith, if you're just, you can, you know, you can about rule the world. Some of the, some of the teaching that's out there. But, oh, I tell you, I, I don't want to rule the world. I want him. He already rules the world. Yes. I just want to be his. But in order for that to happen, I need him to do things in me. But it isn't just about me, is it? We need to be having this sense of persistence to go to God for other people and other needs and say, oh, God. Does not the scripture say, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ? Bear one another's burdens. How many times do we hear about something and we say, oh God, help them. All right, back to business. Doesn't really affect me that much. So I'll, yeah, Lord, I'd love for you to help them, but it's not really that big a deal. It's what we don't say. It is. If we are members one of another, whatever happens affects us and many times that's what the Lord is looking for you know when you've got an injury in your body the the place that that place can't really do much for itself let's put it that way but what happens in a good healthy body the rest of the resources of the body get focused you might even see it swell up because everybody's rushing there to help but you got you got the body of the natural body rushes to the help of that thing of that part that's sore, that's hurting, that's been injured. But I, I, I see the Lord trying, seeking to do that in us. Amen. He's allowing all kinds of needs to arise, but what he's looking for is a healthy body to rise up and say, this shall not stand, oh God. Yes. I want to pray about this as though it was me. Yes. As though I was the one in the difficult place. Oh God, we need you. Come. Yes. Hear the cry of our hearts. Oh God intervene we have a God who will hear the cries of his people and we just sort of let things ride so often and wonder why trouble comes but God is a merciful wonderful awesome loving God you know you have other promises like in Hebrews he that comes to God must believe that he is but of course the devil believes that Got to go beyond that. Believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of who? Those who diligently seek him. That doesn't sound like a quickie prayer, does it? That sounds like, oh God. I'm going to take hold, as it were, of the horns of the altar and I'm not letting go. This is like Jacob who said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Did God take offense at what Jacob did on that occasion? No, he didn't. That was what he was looking for. He was looking for somebody who said, I'm in such need here. This situation is so dire. Oh, God, and I remember the promises you gave me back there. Oh, God, I'm in a desperate need here. and I am not letting you go until until I get what I need from you, Lord. God rewarded that man. He changed his name on the spot. He went into that circumstance. Jacob, he came out of Israel. A prince with God. That's part of what God's doing for us. He's changing us. He's taking people who were, in our, most of our cases, we weren't even Jews to begin with. So we were, we were part of the strangers who were outside the covenants that Paul talked about. But oh, I'll tell you, God is building an Israel. He's building one new man in Christ. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one shepherd, one fold. All of these things that God is doing. And he's calling a people and he's turning them into Israel. Princes of God. So I don't know, I just sense the Lord's desire to do whatever it takes. And usually it takes trouble. To get us to get on our knees and cry out to him and say, oh God, we are helpless without you. But here are your promises, Lord. You think the Lord is angry with us when we 
You think he takes it as an affront when we lift his word up and quote it back to him and say, Lord, you said. That's exactly what he wants us to do. Because what are you doing when you're doing that? What are we doing? We're saying, God, I believe what you said. I believe it enough to, to throw these words right back to you and say, God, you said. Isn't that what Jehoshaphat did? The essence of his prayer was not, oh God, we're in a mess here. Please help us out. This is, he went right back to the covenant. He said, this is what you said, Lord. Part of the covenant is you gave us this land. You blessed us. Aren't you God in heaven? He, I mean, he goes all the way back. He puts everything on him and on his promises. But that's what God is wanting, is a people who are dependent upon his word and his promises and who walk in his covenant, isn't it? Isn't that the heart of what God is seeking from us? He has given us an eternal covenant, not like the one they had. This is so much better. This is what that was just a little shadow of. It was pointing to something that we enjoy in Christ because of what the cross accomplished. But how little of what he accomplished do we experience? We live as paupers even though we have the riches of his glorious inheritance put to our account. And I certainly put myself, put my name at the head of that list. God help us. But I thank him this morning. When I get up and feel bad, I thank him when things don't go right. I thank him when, things, when challenges come. Because he's not doing any of that because he's angry with us. He's doing it because he loves us. He's doing it to draw us closer to him so we can experience that reward that he promised his servant so long ago. The reward of himself. And I just, I just thank him. But all of this comes at the price of a people who are willing to seek him with that kind of seriousness and desperation. There's a whole lot of people who will pray and they'll, try to, they'll, they'll go a long time, but all they're trying to do is get God to do what they want. Instead of, oh God, I just want you. And I want what you want. Lord, I have no agenda here. I just want you. I need you. And I'm not going to quit until I experience you in a new way. And you're going to watch some of those people who have that selfish agenda. You're going to watch them kind of give up and give up on God and go their own way. But you're going to see God help those whose hearts are really seeking him from the heart. With their whole heart, they want him. God has promised you that when you seek him with your whole heart, you'll find him. And I believe that's his promise to everyone here. That isn't just something he said back there through Jeremiah. That's for here, this morning, today, Bible Tabernacle. People are sitting here. God's covenant has been laid before us. He's given us the best that he can give us, his son. And he desires us to enter into the things that he has given us. Praise God.